News 46 is brought to you by... Healthcare Partners and Humana. News is also brought to you by Pahrump Dermatology and Skin Cancer. When you need the best dermatology care in Pahrump, call Pahrump Dermatology and Skin Cancer. 775-727-9800. News is also brought to you by Barry Levinson and Associates, Pahrump's Bankruptcy Center. When it comes to important matters like bankruptcy, call an experienced, compassionate attorney. Call the Bankruptcy Center of Pahrump. Call 775-727-4747. News is also brought to you by Tire Works Total Car Care. Not your typical tire and service company. Guaranteed lowest prices on tires. Your one-stop shop for all automotive needs. Call 775-751-6100 or 702-365-TIRE. Tonight on News 46, two alleged meth traffickers are arrested. The Prump Arts Council celebrates art and soul this weekend. And it's cold outside. Time to get your heater ready for the winter. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and News Across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Thursday, November 3rd, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. The Nye County Sheriff's Scorpion Task Force has made an arrest of two alleged meth traffickers. On October 26th, the Nye County Sheriff's Narcotics Unit received information that the three suspects were bringing a large sized amount of methamphetamine into Pahrump for delivery. The Narcotics Unit knew where the meeting location was to take place, as well as the suspect vehicle. At approximately 2 a.m., October 26th, the suspect vehicle arrived at the meeting location. At this time, members of the NCSO Narcotics Unit and NCSO Patrol moved in and secured the vehicle and the three suspects inside. A further search of the vehicle yielded approximately two ounces or 56 grams of methamphetamine. Three suspects were arrested and transported to the Nye County Detention Center for booking on charges which included high-level trafficking and conspiracy. The suspects are 33-year-old Robert Walsh, 31, Janine Cheney, and 33-year-old Jennifer Kotner. Their bail amounts range from $25,000 to $30,000. Robert Walsh was booked on an additional count of possession of a false identification based on the fact that had uh, he had both a Nevada driver's license and a Visa debit card in the name of another. And folks, the Clark County clerk is encouraging couples planning on getting married on or around November 11th to complete a marriage license pre-application, which is available online through the county clerk webpage. The Marriage License Bureau will probably be extremely busy November 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th due to the likelihood of a large number of weddings planned for 11-11-11. Not only is 11-11-11 considered a lucky day, it is a federal holiday and a three-day weekend for many. And over 500 men and women in Nevada are currently deployed as part of the National Guard and Reserve. In addition to serving their state and the nation, most of these men and women have full-time jobs in our communities. The U.S. Department of Defense program employer support of the Guard and Reserve established the Secretary of Defense Freedom Award to recognize employers who understand the great demands on soldiers and their families and take steps to accommodate these men and women. Employer support of the Guard and Reserve, a Department of Defense agency, is now accepting nominations for the 2012 Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award. Nominations may be submitted by service members or a family member acting on the behalf at freedomaward.mil through January 16th of 2012. 
And the cold days are upon us. Richard Hargis from Pahrump Valley Air Conditioning and Heating gives us some pointers on how to stay warm through the cooler months. If you've been watching our weatherman, Zach Fahrenheit, then you know that the weather is getting colder. We're going to speak to Richard Hargis from Pahrump Valley Air Conditioning about how you can maintain your heater. You need to get your heater checked. Make sure your heater's safe. Uh, don't just light your pilot yourself. Have it checked because you can cause some real problems there. Uh, you need to make sure all your systems are cleaned, keep them clean. And for some reason, we're having a problem with this new economy this year. Have a lot of unlicensed contractors, so check for a license. Uh, we carry them with us all the time. There should be no reason why you should be able to ask for a license and see it. Uh, uh, there seems to be a real problem with that this year. And I know that lighting the, the furnace is an issue you come out and do that and do the full system check as well? Yeah, of course, yes. We check every, everything we can check. I mean, if, if, as, as long as it's reasonably visible, we, we can check all your systems. Uh, if we need to go further, we can go further on that, and that's, that is running, a, running $50 this year. Wonderful. And then also as far as the vents and the duct cleaning? We could do that also for you. Uh, we could we could do as far as you want. I mean, we we've got machines that will <laughs> suck the paint off your walls. <laughs> so, uh, if you have a problem with your ducts and you need them clean, yes, we can help you with that. And I know that uh, that right now at this time of year, people are kind of alternating back and forth. Like uh, yesterday, the air conditioning is on, the heating's on today, and uh, the vents that I'm um, in the filters. Um, people they still need to change their filters regularly, right? every 30 days there is no such thing as a filter that will last 90 days out here they do not exist i don't care what they tell you at the stores they will not last 90 days change them every 30 days and so what else do people need to know about the heating and um, what to do i know that some people use space heaters you can use space heaters just make sure your wiring is capable of handling most mobile homes are not so if you do buy a space heater, don't run it on the high setting, run it on the low setting. About 1,300 amp watts is about the most you're going to run. Don't go to the 1,500 watt setting, you're going to cause problems. Is it more economical to run the home heater or a space heater? Most definitely your home heater is the most economical way to heat your home. And then as far as uh, uh, weather pr proofing your home so that you can save some money there. That's a good point. Lots of caulking. Weather stripping around the doors. I know we all like doggy doors. I have them myself too. If they get too loose, they need to be replaced like everything else. Mine's guilty of that also. But uh, that, that's your heat loss, your doggy doors. What about installation? If people would like to go get a new heater or furnace or air conditioner put in, does Prump Valley Air Conditioning do that? All types, all brands. Just call us, we'll let you know. There you go. And as well, the service call right now, $50 for people to um, c give you a call and you can come out and check their whole system. $50 will get me out there and check everything you need to be checked. What's the phone number? 727-7488. It's Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. And folks, we'll have much more local news coming up right after the break, so please keep it here. Texaco Express Lube is now Express Auto Service and we've relocated to 970 South Prump Valley Boulevard. We now offer complete automotive repair and maintenance. Everything from oil changes to engines and preventive maintenance. Stop in and check out our safe and dependable driving program. This is a vehicle vital signs inspection program and is a free service to our customers. Express Auto Service offers Prump residents quality parts and service at affordable prices. We could tell you we do more for seniors. We could tell you about our SMA Lifestyle Centers, the first of their kind in Nevada. But until you try it for yourself, you'll just have to take our word for it. The SMA Lifestyle Centers by Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. 
assisting those in need unites and builds strength in our community. Valley Electric Association has launched Operation Roundup. This voluntary program gives you the opportunity to have your utility bill rounded up to the next dollar. Choose to participate. Your donation will go to helping seniors assisting in community projects and for education. And it's less than $12 per year. So small an effort can make a huge difference if we all work together. Join in giving to Operation Roundup. Call today, 727-5312 or email wmc at vea.coop. Tire Works is your one-stop shop for complete car care with a full range of services including oil changes, AC, brakes, alignments, and tune-ups. We do it all and all at one stop. Autism is an ever-growing population. It has a large spectrum of different disorders. One person is born with autism in every 110 births in the United States. It is considered the number one most serious developmental disability. Each case is different and every person is unique. If autism has touched your life, call someone who understands. Certified Autism Specialist for Screening, Education, Assistance, Counseling, IEP Development, Dr. Nancy Silvani, Horizon Medical Center, Autism Enlightenment Founder, 702-604-5030. News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Their health care center is now open in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. Welcome back to News 46. This weekend, the Prump Arts Council Art and Soul will be held at the Sanders Family Winery on Kellogg. We spoke to Lulu Brimer to get all the details. 17th annual, and it's Art and Soul, and uh, PAC, Prump Arts Council, is the one that puts it on every year. We have a terrific uh, committee this year. Dorothy Slicker is the chairman, and we have four others on our committee. Myself as publicity, uh, Lloyd Martin, uh, who else? Marilyn Tenney and Princey, who is taking all the orders uh, for vendor space. Princey Simonson. Excellent. So when is this going to be? This is going to be November 5th and 6th at the Sanders, at the Sanders Family Winery. And this is the first time we're having it at the winery, correct? Yes, it is. It's a beautiful facility. Everyone is urged to come out. And it's going to be free to the public, which makes it even better. Good. And this is going to be an indoor and outdoor event. So what time is it going? Is this going to be held at? Is this a Saturday and a Sunday? Yes, it is. It's November 5th and November 6th. It's going to be Saturday from 9 to 5, or 9 to 4, excuse me, and then Sunday from 10 to 3. Great. And so you guys are still actually calling um, artists and crafters and everybody, if they would like to um, get a space at the festival, they can do that. How can they reach you? Okay, they can reach us by calling Princey at area code 775-537-7958. Great, and you guys are going to have entertainment there, door prizes and raffles, and a chance to win a computer, compliments of Master Tech. Yeah. So it's going to be a very fun event. We hope everybody comes out there and sees all of the great paintings and crafts and everything that the artists have made for the event. Yes, there'll, there'll be all kinds of media, there'll be jewelry, there'll be wood crafts, there'll be art in all kinds on leather, on canvas, scenery, western, Indian, everything, and all different kinds of booth spaces still available for inside and in the patio and the outer areas. And 230 much-needed caps are going to be given to some very special kids in local schools. Uh, over 200 hats for our homeless students here in Pahrump. I learned of the need last spring and a bunch of the friends and uh, family just got together and we knit and crocheted all summer and we've got them finally completed for her to pass out. 
These are wonderful, just in time for winter. Absolutely, and we've already had a lot of children identified. This year alone, we've had 150 children identified, which is almost another 60 more than we had at this time last year. So I expect our ending numbers to be a lot more. So these are going to be very, very useful for our children. How are we going to be distributing these? Um, what we're going to be doing is probably the best way for us to distribute them is go directly to the schools. So, like I said, the schools have identified those children already, and so we're going to be going through these beautiful hats and deciding the sizes and how many boys, how many girls that we have. We'll look at the numbers of each individual school and send it out to the schools, and then every school has a site representative, and that site representative will contact the, the child and pass them out. There you go. And how many people participate in making these hats? There was probably about a dozen. We're just kind of spread and the hats multiplied like bunny rabbits. Um, some people would just drop off yarn at Stocker's Crafts. Some people purchased the yarn there and left it without names. So I can't say thank you to everyone personally other than to everyone that helped out. I don't know everyone's name. But it just spread, which is great because that's what so many people here in Pahrump do. A simple project can be done. Are we finding that kids are more and more in need of things like this? Absolutely. Um, a lot of the times, th these types of things are the things that <clears throat> can't be afforded by the parent. I mean, their 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 needs are their basic needs: mm -hmm. heat, food, mm -hmm. and a house. Um, and so, these are the types of things that they just don't get. I bet the smile on these kids' faces is going to be uh, enormous because not only to keep them warm, but just the idea of the hat. Absolutely. And you know, a lot of these kids just need to know that there's somebody out there that cares about them. And this, this is what this shows. What was it like making this? It was a lot of fun. And I just kind of thought back to my sons when they were younger in an elementary school, they're in their mid thirties, but it just, it's nice to know something simple and low cost can make someone feel good about themselves. And you've also identified some other things that the kids may be in need of. Right. Today in talking with Linda, I learned that they can use socks and slippers. So again, I seem to have a way of getting the word out there to as many people as I can that, you know, something again, affordable and just not thought of often. So we'll get her some socks and slippers as time goes on. Are we going to be making these or are we going to um, be asking for the public to help donate? With the socks, most of them will be donated. Slippers can be knit and crocheted, so it will be some of both. There you go. And so for more information, people can call you? They can call me at 751-5356, and there is an answering machine on all the time. Linda, is there anything else that the public can do to help out these kids? Well, if there's anything that they would like to do, whether it be a financial donation or a donation like this, absolutely, they can give me a call. I have a list of items that I always um, have on hand that we need. So they can call me at 727-1875. A book depicting the early days here in Nevada is now available at several locations. It is guaranteed to be an interesting read. 25 years, nearly 25 years, Nye County has had its own publishing arm called Nye County Press and we've published 19 books and our very latest one is one which I and I think other uh, members associated with it have, have, have taken a lot of pleasure in. It's called uh, History of, Tonopah, of the Tonopah Area and Adjacent Region of Central Nevada 1827 to 1941. And it was written by a woman uh, named uh, Lucille Berg. She was born and raised in Round Mountain, Nevada, in Nye County. And uh, in 1942, she, she, she submitted a, a master's thesis to the history department at the University of Nevada at Reno. Mm -hmm. And all these years, it's been passed around and mimeographed copies and dog-eared Xerox copies and everything. And so we have published her book. And uh, she's 98 years old, lives uh, down in Sacramento, and uh, I think that it is still the best source available for the region of central Nevada around Tonopah up to 1942. Is, and is this from the original work? Um, it's, the a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a verbatim. It's an exact copy, uh, you know, retypeset of, of, uh, of her original thesis. And it is so cool because uh, here you have a, a young woman uh, who writes a master's thesis in 1942, and in 2011 it gets published. <laughs> 
Have you had a chance to contact her and tell her about it? Oh yeah, it? We, I've, I contacted her before we began to get her permission. And then when we got it, uh, finally got it printed and everything, we went down and gave it to her and uh, they had a party for her down there associated with it. And uh, it's, just, it's, it's just a wonderful thing to be able to do something like that. And we, owe, we really owe a lot to our county commissioners and to the county as a whole because they're, support, they're so supportive of our uh, of our history here. Where is she located now? She lives in Sacramento, California, 98 years old. And what's her family think about the publication? They love it. They love it. They're, they're, they're thrilled with it. So this is a wonderful thing. Where can people get this? They can get it here at the museum. They can get it at the uh, museum in Tonopah and uh, maybe some other, uh, some other uh, sites. Is it going to be available at the Prompt Community Library? Oh uh, yes, yeah. And here's Zach Fuentes with a look at your entertainment this week. I'm Zach Fuentes with your entertainment this week. Well, some serious drama in the world of teen star Justin Bieber is taking place. It was announced yesterday that Bieber is being faced with a lawsuit, and not just any lawsuit, but a paternity suit. A 20-year-old woman named Mariah Yater is claiming that Justin Bieber, 17, is the father. She claims that the met the, she met the singer in October of last year at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. And she stated that a security guard approached her and asked if she would like to go backstage to meet Justin. She says that her and Justin were mutually attracted to each other, and after a period of kissing, he suggested that the two go somewhere private. That private place, according to her, was a bathroom in the Staples Center. You can finish the rest of the story in your imagination or something. Well, Yeter is demanding that Bieber take a paternity test to scientifically prove that he is the father of the three-month-old baby. She says her main goal in this is only to get adequate support for her baby. Bieber and his camp are denying the rumors, and Justin himself says he isn't even going to focus on it. He looks pretty frustrated there, too, doesn't he? Well, this last summer we reported that British singer Amy Winehouse had unfortunately been found dead in her ho London home. Just last week, it was reported that her death was due to alcohol poisoning, with her blood alcohol content at over five times the legal driving limit. Winehouse's life and career was always plagued with controversy, which at many times overshadowed her musical genius. But, as is the case when most controversial artists die, her music, and solely her music, is now being appreciated. In fact, on December 5th, an all-new full-length album of brand new recordings will be posthumously released according to her record label. The 12-track album named Lioness, Hidden Treasures, will be made up of new songs she was working on before her death, as well as unreleased tracks, covers of classic songs, and alternate versions of her many hits. Her final single, Body and Soul, a duet with the legendary Tony Bennett, is also going to be present on the album. The Winehouse family was consulted and gave their blessing for the album's release. Her father was quoted as saying, it's just incredibly beautiful. I spent so much time chasing after Amy, telling her off that I never realized what a true genius she was. She really was. Well, earlier this year, another British singer that we know over here in America was forced to cancel some of her North American tour dates due to a case of laryngitis. Well, last week, 23-year-old Adele was forced to cancel the remainder of her Adele Live tour, but for a more serious situation. Adele announced that she is now suffering from a hemorrhage vocal cord and will need to undergo throat surgery to fix this problem. Now, a rumor floating around has been that the singer has throat cancer, but according to her publicist, these rumors are 100% false. Adele apologized to her fans, saying that she has no choice but to recuperate fully and properly, or else she risks damaging her voice forever. We most definitely do not want that, Adele. Well, yesterday saw the release of Disney Pixar film Cars 2 on home video for the first time since its release back in June. Well, that wasn't the only thing to happen regarding the movie this week. The film's director, John Lasseter, received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and stars such as Owen Wilson, Bonnie Hunt, Brad Paisley, Don Rickles, Randy Newman, and others were on hand to support him. Lasseter is a two-time Academy Award winner who made his debut in the first ever full-length computer animated film back in 1995, Toy Story. Since then, he went on to direct and or produce all the Disney Pixar films like A Bug's Life, Finding Nemo, Up, and all the other legendary classics in the Disney Pixar catalog. This is also a big year for Disney Pixar as it is their 25th anniversary. Wow, I can't believe it's been that long. Remember, Pick Up Cars, it just came out this week. Zach Fuentes, and that was your entertainment. This and of course, we've still got Zach Fuentes around. He's going to be back after the break with a look at our seven-day forecast, so please keep it here.
Are you and your animals ready for the change in weather? If not, saddle up and ride on down to Shadow Mountain Feed. Who better to help you prepare for all seasons than... Hi, I'm Patty. And I'm Ron. Ron and Patty are there for you, providing everything from the barn to the dressing room. If we don't have it and you want it, we'll get it. That's right, so ride on down to Shadow Mountain Feed, located at 2031 West Bell Vista in Pahrump. Tired of satellite or cable bills? Save your money. Get over-the-air free TV. Get connected to local KPVM TV 46. Four digital TV channels providing Nielsen-rated programs, current and blockbuster movies, Olympic sports, local Pahrump news, and your government meetings. Call 727-9400 or Rod's TV at 727-9395. One call. That's all. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump. Local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. News 46 weather is also brought to you by Humana. Welcome back to News 46. I'm Zach Fuentes here with your weather. Today we have mostly sunny skies, a few just very, very thin clouds out there. Our high was at 70 degrees and our winds came out of the south-southeast at 6 miles per hour. And our gusts were at up to 18 miles per hour and our pressure was at 30.3, dropping a bit there. Our UV index was at 4 moderate and our humidity was at 11%. It was kind of dry out there. Our sunrise was at 7.09 a.m. and our record for today was 86 degrees just last year. Tonight looks like we're going to have some partly cloudy skies, a low of 53 degrees, and the winds to come out of the south-southwest at 14 miles per hour. The gusts are going to go back up to 28 miles per hour. And by the way, we do have a wind advisory that's going to last until Friday tomorrow at about 8, 8 o'clock. Our humidity is going to be at 27%, and our sunset is going to be at 5.46 p.m. Our record for tonight was 26 degrees back in 1943. And tomorrow we have a 40% chance of rain, a high of 63 degrees and a low of 42 degrees. The winds are going to come out of the south-southwest at 15 miles per hour and our gusts are going to be at up to 34 miles per hour. Our UV is going to be at 4 still and our sunrise is going to be at 7, 10 a.m. The humidity is going to be pretty high, possibly with the you know, chance of rain at 35%. And Friday, Saturday, looks like we're going to have some clouds still. Sunday, we might have another chance of rain, 30% this time. Otherwise, from Monday to Wednesday, it's going to be pretty sunny skies out there. And Thursday, we're going to have some clouds as well. Our highs aren't very high at all. They're in the 60s and 50s, and our overnight lows are even lower than that. And in some areas, it's even cooler or warmer, just depending on where you live. But they are in, from the 40s and 30s. And today's worst weather was in Red Borland Springs, Tennessee, where they had rain and thunder. Back to you. The Sheriff's Farm will be held this Sunday, November 6th, from 1 to 3 at Wolfie's. The public is encouraged to attend. And Rosemary Clark Middle School will be holding parent-teacher conferences in the gymnasium from 2.30 to 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, November 9th. They will also be hosting the Drive for the Kids fundraiser for students during this event. Saida Trudeau will donate $10 to the school for every person over the age of 18 who test drives a vehicle. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We'll have to get down there. <laughs> All right, tomorrow night from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. is Teen Night at the Nye Communities Coalition campus, campus, which is the Old Man's School at 1020 East Wilson Road. This is, a, this is a free event to kids with karaoke, Wii games, food, and fun, open to the middle school through high school age students. And the 4-H program is having an open house tomorrow night with games and prizes. Meet the K-9K Cappers mascot, Freya. It will be held from 6 to 8 p.m. at 1651 East Calvada at the corner of Calvada and Dandelion. And our friends at Domino's Pizza are offering any artesian-style pizza with your choice of eight breadsticks and a two-liter bottle of soda for only $13.98. So that's their November special. Make that's, sure you give them a call. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. And folks, I think that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. And from everyone up here in the Hill at KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Till then, good night, Prop. Good night.